talking about straining for that logo on the side of your helmet and not the name on your back. Yes, sir. Yes, because sir. we know what it represents. It represents everybody here you see yes, and everybody you can't that we've talked about. Yes, I'm here to strain with you, man. I swear to God I'm here to strain with you. Let's go. Everything you got, strain with everything you got. Let's go. Bills on three. One, two, three. Bills. You're listening to the Off Tackle with John Fetus Show with your host, Joe Miller. Well, what is going on, everybody? Welcome. Welcome, everybody, into the Off Tackle with John Fetus Show, brought to you by the Market Dominator team on the Buffalo Rumblings vidcast network presented by picasso's pizza treat yourself to the most flavorful pizza on game day picasso's we are buffalo pizza shipping local local and nationwide order online at picasso's pizza.net john i'm joe that's john this is joe host of the show star of the show former buffalo bill i'm just a dude with a beard that just kind of hangs out but you can find me on twitter if you so choose to at Joe Miller Wired, and you can find that guy on Twitter at John Fina. John Fina, how are you feeling? I'm good, Joe Miller. I'm yeah. really good. How are you? I am uh, feeling good. So something about being out in the cold yesterday has gotten me a little bit. So I'm a little zapped energy wise, but uh, I'm going to bring it for the next hour. I love how you rise to the occasion <laughs> like that. Oh my God, yes. you're like our ninth string secondary player showing right. up and exactly. Yeah. That's how I feel. Like it, it's so put me in, coach. I'm ready to go. Oh, so, but uh, we're, we're, we're going to kick this pig. Uh, we're going to do the best that we can. <laughs> I never heard that expression, <laughs> and I hope to never hear it again. <laughs> well, you like barbecue food. You like barbecue uh, pork and I stuff. Guess. Kick this pig. We're going to kick know. this pig. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. But uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a moment to uh, welcome everybody to the show. So, all of you in the chat comment section Tracy Victor, Sarah Larson, Ralph Wilson Sr., uh, uh, Dan Buffalo Freddy's in the room. Dave Thorpe, Saxon Dave is in the room. Still in Buffalo, all the way from the nice. UK. The UK. Daniel Gauris is with us. Nice. Amanda is here. She figured out how to change her last name. That's talent right there because it was oh. her old last name for a very long time. Richard Rush. Jason okay. Humbert is in the room. It's good to see all, all right. It's good to see all you guys. And everybody, by the way, is excited to see you. Karen Idzik, Jessica Tennis, and the Trek reviewer. Welcome. Everybody's excited to see you. You're coming into town, uh, Packers. Yeah? yeah, something's wrong with your mic now. Uh, I adjusted what? my gain. Maybe you can adjust yours. What's wrong with yeah, it? I'm coming in for the Packers game, but anybody in the chat uh, who's going to be at Kansas City, I will also be at Kansas City. I can't, uh, there's some, for some reason, my chat function isn't working, so I can't like say hello. So, hello, everyone in the chat. So even if you go to, if you log into YouTube and watch, because I have you the YouTube program pulled up over oh, on my other screen. Through the YouTubes? Yes, yes, I do. Oh, so amazing. we do have our very su- first super chat. And can you hear me? Because you did this to me a couple of weeks ago. You said my mic wasn't working right. Never been the no, comment. no, you're good now. I changed well, nothing. <laughs> I don't know if you're good, but. <laughs> I changed nothing. I think the last time I tried this, it was playing us over us. And well, you got to mute work. it. You got to mute it. Did that work? Well, I I don't know. Did it? See, whoever, not, when I mute, <laughs> see when I mute my my computer, then I muted you too. No, you want to mute right. it on the screen. You want to mute YouTube. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think YouTube. I got it. I see everybody now. Hi, Mimi. Is Mimi in there? Uh, hey. I see people saying hi, Mimi. Yes, Mimi is in fact here. She says hi, friends. Go Bills. But we have a super chat for the pullout king. Who yeah, yeah, yeah. Appropriately yeah, the says king. the Bills did it. They pulled it out. Oh dear <laughs> go. God! This is a family show. <laughs> <laughs> so with that on that note why don't we take just a moment and hear from oh i didn't finish it out so welcome everybody we are super chat live uh if you want to get uh our attention if you want to ask john a question if you've got a comment for john just as uh pull out king just did you can super chat us and i'll read that off and ask your question to john please like and subscribe whatever channel or platform you're watching or listening on but this show, as we talked about, is brought to you by the Market Dominator. And here is the Market Dominator himself, Jonathan Spaschek. Hello, Buffalo football family. My name is John Spaschek, and I am the Market Dominator, as well as the very proud sponsor of the John Fina Show, hosted by Joe Miller. 
You know, these are some of my very good friends and I love what they do because they bring such a high level of excellence to the show, breaking the game down, helping us as fans understand it more, and so we can engage with love and support for our Buffalo football team. Now, folks, if you're looking to engage in real estate, I'm your guy because I will bring these same qualities to the table for you to help you win in this competitive market. So whether you're selling or buying, you need to call 716 716- 570-3298 if you want to win. Let's go, Buffalo. Let's go, Buffalo. If you've got a house to sell or you're looking in the market to buy, please give John a call, 716-570-3298. That number again, 716-570-3298. John is the title sponsor of the show, and we love him dearly. But we have a football game to talk about. And with that, what will your thoughts on that foot. Now we have talked many times about the fact that we both hate the Steelers. So you hated playing the Steelers. You always felt like as a player, they had your, the bills number. And I grew up hating the Steelers because it always felt like the Steelers had our freaking number. <laughs> so what, what, what were your thoughts? I'll let you go first thoughts on that game from yesterday. Well, it was hard for me because I grew up a Steelers fan. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. Yeah, because you know when you when you're from Arizona and you're old as dirt like I am, you don't have a team. So when you're a kid, you choose a winner, right? So my neighbor liked the Rams, and my brothers liked Dallas, and I just you know I just gravitated toward Pittsburgh. I actually was Mean Joe Green up until like the day I was drafted, and then I became me. But uh, yeah, I now it's just really hard. I got some really good friends out here, Pittsburgh fans. So I'm doing my fair share of gloating. Uh, the game, I th- I can't find my prediction sheet, man. I don't know where it went in this. You mess, predicted but... a W for this game. I know I did, but I wanted to track it. Now I have to go back and listen to our podcast, which sounds <laughs> old. God, I can't imagine how bad that's going to be. <laughs> Reliving all my bad picks. Oh no, uh, I. This game went, I think I predicted 38-10, so, or 35-10 or something. I mean, it went how I thought it would. I, I think Mike, Stop Mike Tomlin, I'm not bragging. I'm just lucky for once. My God, I'm so bad in fantasy football. I got I to gotta get a win somewhere. Uh, yeah, I, you know, Mike Tomlin's a fantastic coach. I think yeah. he's, he's, he's going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Just because, my God, I mean, this if 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 they have a losing season this year, it's his first ever. First in what twenty years? In twenty years, yeah. That he well, I think he's been a head coach for twelve or fifteen. It's either twelve or fifteen years, but All yeah, right. twelve or fifteen. That's a hell of a long time not to have a losing season in this league. So uh, it went pretty much how I thought it was going to go. I thought we'd find um, dominance. I was, to be fair, a little concerned about you know our secondary. Yeah. And our wide receiver position, but uh, you know the wide receivers delivered. I think the secondary delivered, but it wasn't as obvious. You know, we yeah, bent yeah. a little bit, but we didn't broke. You know, no. what did you think? What did you think, Joe Miller? So there's there's always that um, never overly certain playing the Steelers. There's, I mean, I, I I've talked about it before. I don't remember if you were on the team, but I remember specifically the Bills were. Gosh, what it was either it was one of the '90s years, and the Bills were. It was when Christian Okoye was on the Chiefs. The Bills were undefeated. I think they were eight and zero, nine and zero, or ten and zero. It was some crazy number. Like hadn't won, hadn't lost a game yet. They go into Kansas City primetime football and get waxed like thirty three to three. And I just remember being like, or not Kansas City, to Pittsburgh. And it, I've got the wrong game. Regardless, it just always seems like whenever we play the Steelers, that they've got yeah. I'm I'm like foggy tonight. I apologize, everybody. Um, it just seems like whenever we play the Steelers, that there's there's the matchup is just right. So, uh, the amount of games that I can list off, whether it's the back the backups, the Malarkey team that was, you know, all they had to do was beat the Steelers backups, and we go to the playoffs. We didn't. Um, there's just so many times that we've played the Stevie Johnson game where he had the game winning catch in his hands coming down. And he dropped it, and we lost that game. There's just there's something about that Steelers team that they just always have played us tough. Uh, going back as far as I can possibly remember, and uh, which so is like I, what two weeks, right? So I, exactly, I uh, <laughs> I expected a win, and I think I boastfully and proudfully said that we would be in the 30s and they would score less than us. Um, 
But isn't, that I the de- isn't that the definition of a win? They score yeah, less than us. I, well, I'm going somewhere with this. I didn't expect it to be. I didn't yeah. expect us to win by five touchdowns, and that was effectively them pulling, you know, taking their foot off the gas a little bit. I, there was, I mean, I was in the stands rooting for the Steelers to. I wanted to see a little bit of game action. I wanted to see the Steelers kind of not score a lot or threaten the game, but I wanted to see a situation. I wanted to see. You Ken- wanted to see Josh Allen throw for another hundred and seventy-five yeah. yards. I wanted to see. I wanted to see it keep there. Going. I fixed it for you. Yes, I was looking forward to seeing Josh Allen continue to press and just impose his will on that game just to see what it would become. And the Steelers, if they were kicking field goals, they were missing them. If they were going for it on fourth down, they weren't, they were turning it over on downs. They just, they just, the bills had a day. Josh Allen had a day. Gabriel Davis had a day. Kenny Pickett actually played very well, decisive in the pocket, throwing the ball, throwing darts. He was reading and re, like reacting and getting the ball out. What that's a really good, great question for you is, that's just, that's the first game he's ever played as a as a pro started and he, that defense in that cr- with that crowd. What were your thoughts on Kenny? Well, I I agreed with you and I listened to your pod last night and it's just so funny. It's like uh, you know, it's never enough, right? Right. It's never enough. It's never enough. It could be seventy five to three, and you know we oh there's that one punt return that we didn't take back. To the house. Right, I right. Know, I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, having been there, like, I just, I'll win by one. I'll yeah. take it. You right. know, and it's and it's a beautiful thing. As long as there's, it's a W, right? <laughs> and you win by one, and then you can tell everybody to. Easy. Know. Family show, John. <laughs> oh, this is a family- shoot. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Look, I mean, it's so hard to win a football game. Even when you have, uh, you know, this guy and that guy, that guy, you know, it's still hard to win a game. So, look, uh, I'm okay with winning by one or winning by 35. I'm good. I just like the W. Right, right. Big so, dubs, Joe. So, so what is? But, but what were your thoughts on Kenny Pickett watching him play? Oh yeah, I, I avoided that question. You know, I think it's. Um, you change the way you play defense when you get enough of a cushion, I think. Uh, so he he was good. He was accurate. I think he was decisive. Uh, I, I What I do like about him in this game is they really put Elam to the test, right? They, they I don't know if you'd say they went after him, but, you know, he had some balls caught around him, and I think he was probably feeling a little good. You know, he had some sort of a PFF rating that was off the charts for a rookie, Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, it's it's a good way to get a little humility in a huge victory where the ball comes your way a little bit as a DB. And right, it just right. gets, gets, gets you better. So thank you, Kenny Pickett, or as I said, Wilson Pickett. And you Wilson said Pickett. Pickens. Kenny Pickens. <laughs> uh, sure, but he looked a- good. He looked good, man. And I, I think um, with the right personnel around him, you know, that team comes together. But I don't think their offensive line wait, is that very – Wait, wait, wait. They, they were saying this on the radio today. So he doesn't have much around him. Okay, his offensive line might not be the best in the world. It's not terrible. Mm. That dude has Chase Claypool. No, no, no. He's got, he's got some decent weapons. Pickens. I, I, he's got Deontay I, Thompson. He's got Najee Harris. So pa- you didn't Pat let me Breyer finish, which was cool because, uh, you know, I, I don't ever cut you off. <laughs> that is not true either. <laughs> We're breaking up. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying he's got We're breaking people. up. He's got tools around him. He's got God. people. You didn't let me finish. All right, finish. Well, they're not playing uh, very good defense <laughs> no, at the moment, not, and no. I think their offensive line is pretty average. Uh, and I, I, although he does have some pretty good weapons, he's got a good tight end. Yeah. Um, and I love Chase Claypool, except every time I play him in fantasy, he gets like one. And then when I don't, he gets like 18. <laughs> and then Pickens looks really good. And I, you know, I, I was thinking about drafting him and then I didn't cause I suck at fantasy. But <laughs> so my point is if they, you know, they get a few more positions in place on defense and they improve their offensive line a little bit, whether by player, by personnel, yeah. I think they be, you know, they get right back in there. I don't know that they can do it this year. I mean, there's a lot of, I think there'll be a lot of doubt swirling and they're not in the easiest division, so you know, not doesn't look great for them. 
Yeah. And there's, and there's comments saying that their, their offensive line is awful. It's, I, you know, awful is a fun word because all it takes, you look at the bills, even last season, the offensive line was not great. They flip, flip one guy, they put Ryan Bates in and all of a sudden the offensive line is actually respectful. Um, yeah. But so, I mean, it, it's sometimes it's, it's the offensive line is a unit, right? It's, it's five pieces that all have to work together kind of in unison. Well, which, it's more than that, Joe. It's a nebulous way to place blame without actually having to explain it. It's like our politicians. You just throw a platitude out there and nobody ever says, show me, right. show me your source, show me your research. What do you got? Right. 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 Nobody does that. Right. And it's easy because it's like this amorphous blob that weighs in at about, you know, 1500 pounds so it's easy to just oh the offensive line's not playing well. <laughs> well, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But I'm not bitter. But I'm the, not bitter. It sounds like you are. <laughs> no, no, it, it's it's not the uh, it's not the therapy sessions that I have on WebMD or you know what do they call that where you do it through the phone? Uh, I don't know. Every time I've gone to WebMD, it says I have not cancer. WebMD. You know, uh, <laughs> it's like somebody in, somebody my, in the my my pinky fingernail it, uh, is a little bit sore in the front right corner. You've got cancer. Go to your doctor right away. You've got kids. <laughs> it's like uh, I don't think it's cancer. I think I've got a. I think I've got a splinter. I think it's what <laughs> Virtual anyway. doctoring. What's it called? Now it's going to make me crazy. Somebody in the chat. I don't help know. me. It's been a so, anyways, day. anyways, yes. Anyway, thoughts of the game. Um, it went the way that I expected as well. But I always, in the back of my mind, have this feeling that the Steelers are just going to play as tight. And the reality is. That's the worst beat that Mike Tomlin has ever faced. So there's something to be said for that feeling that like they do a good job of trying to keep games close. You know, they coach their players well. They've got good weapons. You know, Kenny Pickett threw for 320 something yards, you know, which was insane. So, but it went it went the way that I thought I thought that it would. So. I'm glad that Mike Tomlin got to experience his worst loss at the hands of the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. Yeah. I I you know, Frankly, uh, it gives me a little sense of pride because we've suffered some pretty horrible losses in the past 20 years. <laughs> it's been longer than uh, that. Is it? We, we've, we've, we've suffered some It hasn't been longer. It just feels longer. Since 1960, when this team was <laughs> it came into existence, we've suffered some horrible uh, losses. So let's transition now. And uh, before we do, uh, why don't you give us a house capital read? Why don't we talk, I would you talk love to. to. Talk to us about house capital. I would love to. Hey, everybody. When you're looking to buy a house, everyone's got a guy. You might need work done on your roof. Your buddy's got a guy for sure. You need an inspection? I know someone. And when you're looking to get your financing together, nobody beats Brian Belser from House Capital Corporation. Mm -hmm. He is your guy. They help make the mortgage process simple, hassle-free, and understandable, which is a Herculean task. At House Capital, their preferred relationships with some of the top lenders give you the edge up in getting the financing you need. Take it to the house, Joe okay. Miller, okay. with House Capital and Brian Belser. I like that read because it's all true. Yeah. Who likes the mortgage process? I mean, if somebody can make that smooth and Brian can do it. Brian's a good guy. Yeah, Brian. Yeah. Bri I, I have used Brian uh, uh, twice, actually. For, so. I like him because he actually, you know, unlike most people, he responded to my text by accident. And then I just like started texting him all over the place. <laughs> you were that guy. So let's talk about the good from this game. The good from this game. Uh, I'm going to go first uh, with some of my thoughts on the good from this football game. Um, I was very pleased as much as there's people out there that are concerned about the defense uh, giving up 320 something yards passing to a rookie mm. quarterback that was very decisive and the ball came out quick to some very, very solid weapons. Mm. I was pleased with what the Bills did. I felt like they kept everything in front of them. I felt like they challenged when they need to. It was clear they weren't necessarily trying to blitz Pickett. They weren't trying to get in the backfield and mess with his timing. Um, it was almost like uh, we don't know what we're going to get from this guy, so we're going to put him in a position where he's going to make mistakes as you said bend but don't break and they executed it to perfection there's there's moving to the other side of the ball gabe davis uh he had two catches at one point for 160 yards and two touchdowns which <laughs> that's an nfl record for the most efficient like game that a, a wide receiver has ever had in the nfl 
And then I just don't even know. Josh Allen was playing out of his mind. Like he was just, and it, it, it comes, I said this on the show yesterday. We're going to talk about the run game. You and I are, and we don't have video clips because YouTube keeps flagging us. So we're, we're trying to, <sighs> we're working on a workaround for, for clips, but I know that you, you've got, you're prepared to talk about the run game and some things that you saw in this game. All but like, here, yeah, but like I said, on my show yesterday, as much as we all want them to establish the run and we don't want it to be done with 17, it's really weird because they're hard because Allen is so effective with his arm. It almost turns into a, well, what is even the point of running the football? Like they let the dude sling it. He just, he's good. So he was just in another world. So for me, that was a lot of the good. What did you have for good? I mean, a lot of the same stuff. I'll tell you, you know, and it's funny because you look at the game and Josh made a couple of, couple of throws that were eh, you know but <laughs> and again we get into that situation where well we want to win by 75 35 wasn't good enough right and so you, it's kind of hard when the bar is so high to look and say well you know he's still almost human i mean right. we all know he's in men in black right he's one of them aliens <laughs> but to be fair you know he had a couple of poor throws but you have to kind of like couch that with some of those throws were just incredible. Yeah. And, you know, obviously he was he was on. I mean, he was really on. Uh, Gabe Davis was great. I got to tell you, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised no one has really talked about uh, Quentin Morris on a couple of his grabs. Undrafted I mean, free agent, Quentin Morris. Yeah, yeah. But it, uh, he picked uh, one out of the air from Josh that had to have been going at about – 70 miles an hour scared him yeah it was uh I, it was, which, which it was actually, my you know i always go 70 that's my number you know. <laughs> it was on well 70 was on the field yesterday pumping the crowd up but it was not the right it was the wrong 70 it was the that, other 70. oh eric woods okay we we share that designation 70 <laughs> so obviously isaiah hodgins um First i thought quentin morris yeah, yeah that was that was terrific um james cook looked pretty good when he yep. had a when he had open space, I mean, he actually made some pretty cool moves. Like he evaded a tackler on that touchdown. That was a yep. nice, nice little move. Um, I thought the defensive front four mm. were particularly good, especially when you look at the linebacker position, it was really uh, Milano and Dodson, right? Right. So Milano, the starter Dodson played, I think very well. He showed up quite a bit. And then we still have to remember we're we're looking at a secondary with zero returning starters from last year. Right. And we're in game this was game five, right? We're four and one. And of course, like Leslie Frazier's not an idiot. You're up by twenty eight or even twenty one. It completely changes the way you play defense. And right. it should. Right. I mean it, it, I don't care if I if they go down the field eight yards at a time and chew up clock and keep the ball in bounds and you're you know you're not having guys like really trying to make a play you know when the announcers say you they got to get aggressive and take a chance you know that's kind of when the bad things ha tend to happen too so to be in a position where you don't have to do that stuff that's pretty good yeah so give up some passes let Kenny Pickett Kid Pickens Willie Wilson Pickett feel pretty good <laughs> uh and I thought that the protection was pretty good I didn't think there were any issues with protection. Round roundabout, it was a good game, except um, you know the running game wasn't as it wasn't as prolific as Joe Miller would want. But now I don't, I don't know where the bar is. That's not true. I'm I'm the abandon, I'm the abandon the run guy. <clears throat> so you're the one that has always kind of kept me grounded. Like no, no, they got to run the football, and I'm like, why? <laughs> well, they keep they keep running play action, so right. they they better run it every now and again, or no one's gonna bite on that handoff. Well, looking through some of the video clips that you wanted me to pull before I got word that we couldn't show any, you know, it seemed like a couple of them there were run blitzes called. So even so, it it looked especially the first one that you had. Uh, so the Bills went run, and the Steelers knew it was coming somehow. And there was that run blitz was called, and the dude, t you know, tangled up Singletary's legs. But I don't want to get to that. I don't want to get to that yet. Do you have any good stuff to talk about as far as from an offensive line or defensive line breakdown, or is it all more just talking about the run and kind of the trends that you see? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, defensive front, I'm, I'm a little concerned. I didn't look at the injury report today because it was so busy. I know Jordan Phillips came out. Yes. Um, I don't know if that's a recurrence of the hamstring, but when he's in there, we're, we're, we're a better team, I think. Mm. And I don't know that Ed Oliver disappeared as in not contributing or I, – I mean, they were good against the run, man. Uh, yeah, and that, but, but then conversely – 
on the pass, they were in the they really pushed the center of the pocket. You know, I, I skimmed through the game pretty pretty quickly today. I try to focus on the run game because that's what we tend to talk about. But uh, I'll I'll follow a few of the defensive plays just to see the, what what I want to see, which is on the snap of the ball, are our guys getting up under the pads or under the jaw, the chin strap of the offensive line? And by and large, we're doing it, and we're seeing some pretty cool flashes from different guys. You know, we all were expecting to see a lot from Von Miller, but I think, you know, Groot, not like obvious getting there kind of stuff, but he's he's getting around it, you know, and as soon as somebody starts to pull the ball down a little bit, because Pickett, uh, you know, he didn't do that kind of, I didn't, I guess he had a few scrambles, but Wasn't not, much. Quite, not quite through the middle like we might see from some other guys. Right. So I really liked Epinesa, did some good things. It was, um, it was it was fun to watch the defense actually. Yeah, the defense the defense was the one of the exciting things. So I think Najee Harris ran for twenty one or twenty two yards on eleven carries, and that was with having like a seven yarder and a six yarder. So he had a couple decent runs inside yeah. of those thirteen carries or twelve or whatever he had, um, and the rest were either for losses or for not for not much at all. It's funny because. That was like the sticking point over the last couple of years is the run defense was not great. And they very much shored up the run defense. Lawson is active, has a lot of action on that run defense. Like you said, Jordan Phillips, we know what Ed Oliver brings. And Daquan Jones is is as good as advertised. And everything that we thought, you know, that Star Latule was supposed to be. And then, you know, I'm not even talking about Tim Settle. Tim Settle yeah. has been fantastic as well. Yeah. So uh, Groot and Carlos Basham and obviously AJ Evanessa, the, the rolling guy. It's it's working for the first time in three years. This whole idea of rotating these guys and that we haven't even talked about Vaughn Miller. Vaughn Miller. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yep. What was the Bills' defense ranked last year? Uh, number one. What was it ranked the year before? Number one. It's and number you're two right now. It's finally working. The no. Day- Hang on a second. Time out. None of us were happy with what the defensive line did last year. You I know, not- and I was I wasn't either. But it's just so weird because you know, like you pull out a single position group, and then, but you look at the overall, and you're like, well, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense because we were dissatisfied here, but we finished at the top. Like, how does that work? Well, they were number one compute. In- number one in scoring defense. So they were giving up the least amount of points and they had the best pass defense. That's basically how the last two years have gone. They were the number one scoring defense and they were the best pass defense in the Where league. Where did we fall against the run? I think it was somewhere between five and 10. I can't remember. It wasn't super low, but it wasn't. Still not yeah, bad. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't yeah. number one, but it's that was the whole conversation. How can this defense get better? And they are better right now. Right. Well, and I mean, I, I don't think they would. We skirted around it. I mean, I I sometimes get to be too big of a fan and get all Pollyanna, you know, because I like to root for guys having been there and had people kind of, you know, scream things at me in the parking lot as I was leaving on the loss. You know, so I, I, those guys have feelings. Maybe not. <laughs> so I, I try to stay positive. Maybe that's my fatal, my tragic flaw. You have no tragic flaws. You have I not. Might. You have none. So, yeah, but it was overall, I mean, just there was there was a lot to talk. How do you how do you how do you pull out the bad in a game like that? Right. How do you find the things? Mm-hmm. To, what you know, what is what is the work that is needed? Well, we're going to. Well, I, I mean, yeah. Is that where we are? The work? Did you we're just lead into that? I did. That was a segue. Yes. Are you pretty... sure we don't need to work on our barbecue game first? <laughs> no, we got time. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> Come on. I don't get the segue. <laughs> Only you get the segue. God, I can't. At least I can spell it, I guess. Um, <laughs> the work. Okay, so, and but this kind of like transitions into the run game discussion, which we haven't had yet. Yes. yes. So is that okay? Is, yes, is it time now? Yeah, well, let's... let's Wait a minute, if, it's my show. Why am I asking Exactly. You? I would tell you exactly that, that uh, how, what, how, wherever you want to take us, John. Well, Take us there. Oh boy, I don't know. Is anybody in the comments section got an idea? Wait, Joe Miller's <laughs> in the comments section. You might be right at Brian Bowers, but the the were yeah, it's bro. A, it's a, type it too fast. You're lucky that Janine Tally isn't in the comments <laughs> section. She'd destroy <laughs> you. I got a J nine Tally reference. <laughs> the, gra- the grammar police. So I love yeah. it though. I used That's to funny. be like that. I did. Yeah. Would yeah, you let it? And, you let it go. You were just like, oh, no, I no. I'm, I'm still in therapy. I'm um, 
hysterical <laughs> goofball. Talk, so, talk to me. Talk to us. We have a good amount of time to break yeah, down what yeah. the HE double hockey sticks is going on with this offensive line still three years in. Why we cannot develop a run game with a talented running back in Devin Singletary. He is not not talented. And then, oh, by the way, if you did not hear this, there's a lot of conversation out there about Christian McCaffrey coming to Buffalo. So if the Bills were to make a trade for Christian McCaffrey, who I don't know where he is in his contract last year, final one or two years, it would only cost the Bills, I think, $600,000 to to get like in the salary situation. And oh, by the way, to cap that off, I don't know what you're doing. To cap that off. CMC. 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 Gotcha. To to cap that off, uh, it was also reported... I took screenshots, by the way. So it was reported oh. today as well. Did you get that, that approved through YouTube? <laughs> from Michael, right? From Michael Balco. I have confirmation that the Bills are one of the teams that have contacted the Panthers regarding Christian McCaffrey. Michael Balco is the sports journalist podcast host featured on ESPN and USA Today. He's from Pennsylvania. Why he would know that, I don't know, but he is say- stating that it is 100% accurate that the the Bills are in on Christian McCaffrey it would only cost them $600,000. However, what is what what is I don't want to say wrong. What is going on with this offensive line with this run scheme and would putting a guy like Christian McCaffrey back there even matter? So let's um let's table Mc, the Mc, CMC Christian McCaffrey conversation because I I don't know how it, does it just benefit the Carolina to dump his number? Is that it? No, they would more than likely be in for a draft pick. So they just fired Matt Rule. Oh, okay. Yeah, they fired Rule. So this is a long play for them. Yes. All right. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Um, sorry. I didn't mean to <laughs> minimize your feeling. Do we need to have a moment? No, you're good. Okay. So I, I looked at this game in particular, and I didn't go back uh, and look at previous games, but something popped out at me, and I was thinking – about the offensive set. Now you can say it's uh, philosophy or uh, strategy, whatever, right? Now, right. we had a play, I think, a couple of weeks ago. I'm not sure, maybe three weeks ago. You are like, oh, that play was so great. We, we ran to the left. We had a bunch formation. We had angles, and I can't remember if it was Zach Moss or Devin Singletary. We got into the alley on the left side of the field, and it was a big pickup. Right, right. So I've been kind of uh, riddling that through my brain a little bit. And something happened last night when I was watching the film. Mm -hmm. Just got back from Flagstaff. And I'm just kind of like flipping through looking at the run game because I'm I'm hearing all this, mostly from this guy Joe Miller, about the run game and frustrating. And and I I believe in the run game and I see how – how great it is, how Baltimore's used it to their benefit and how Tennessee and we always talk about when the upcoming teams are coming along about their running attack when they have a good back. And like, and it's like, I want to be, I want to be that team. I want people to like be worried about our running game, you know? So what's wrong with it? I, I looked at this game in particular and go back and look if you want all of our, I should say, at least three quarters of all of our failed running plays were with bunch sets right off of the tight end or tackle area and or along with a wing position from Sweeney or Morris. All of our successful run running plays, 90%, 75%, excluding Josh Allen, were from simple sets. Mm. Whether the tight end was on the ball, there was one where the tight end was off the ball. I think it was Sweeney. And here's where I'm going with this. When you bring everybody into the box with that formation of two receivers and a wing on one side, you're creating a lot of conversations from the center across. Mm -hmm. And defenses and, and defensive athletes now are so good that on the snap of the ball, a guy that you think might have leverage can be inside and the guy, the other guy goes outside, which happened to us on two plays. So the one where you're talking about Singletary getting caught, you're like, oh, they, they knew the play. I don't think they did. I mean, they, they probably see that set as a, as a 50, 50, meaning we're going to run one particular run play out of it, or it's a pass. And either way, there's an upside. Right. Like I don't think they were worried about power or counter coming out of that. 
Right. Brian Bowers asked a question. Aren't most of our running plays inside zone out of shotgun or RPOs? Well, that's exactly my point. So when you're running it from this grouping of people within the box, you're making the math harder. And I don't really mean like chaos math or anything like that. But now you're asking the center to not just identify defensive personnel, but now there's so many more things they can do to disguise uh, to disguise the defense because it's tighter that you might be picking this guy as the mic, and then on the snap of the ball, that guy ends up being the mic. Or even if you're right, by the time you get all the way across the formation where you got Diggs and Davis and Sweeney trying to figure out which of the DBs and linebackers are who's or who's, right. it, it, there were there were three of those plays where I was like, wait a minute, why, why is um, Morse – going at that angle or why is he going to that guy and i'm trying to like i'm if i have to rewind the film like six times on a running play to figure out who's got who right that's bad right so my opinion uh moss comes from utah where they did a lot more spread i i don't remember uh, what singletary's college uh, kind of uh, running plan was like but i think these guys being as a more diminutive stature would benefit more from fewer people in the sight line and much bigger wide open spaces. I don't know. Me? Yeah, I don't know where Singletary came from either. Um, the funny thing is, is they've got three running backs on this football team that are all very different, right? So uh-huh. James Cook, Singletary, Moss, very different running backs. And I think that's part of the problem. It's one thing to have a change of pace back, right? Thurman Thomas, Kenny Davis. But even still, Kenny Davis could do a lot of the things that Thurman could do. And then there's a lot of times when you've got that big beastly guy that's going to like crush you. And then you get the small twitchy guy behind him for the, for third downs or vice versa. You know, when you no, think of what I'm not going to agree with you. Okay. I'm not, but I'll tell which, you that which, the, part, the, which part are you not agreeing with? Well, that they're that much different, that their skill sets are more aligned for a specific type of running attack. I think at this level, you know, they can all succeed as long as, as the philosophy is right. I just don't think we're taking advantage. Look, and I, and I didn't want to say it, but I don't think that our edge guys block very well. I don't. So you say wide receivers. Or tight ends. Or tight I think ends. They're aver- I, think, I think our tight ends are average blockers. Gotcha. So and I Daniel, think that's a big problem. Daniel Garis says that Moss and Motor are similar, in his opinion. I disagree wholly. Like, to me, Zach Moss is a one-cut, downhill zone running back like he is not twitchy he's not going to make a guy miss Devin Singletary has attributes so listen to me carefully attributes that doesn't mean that he is has the potential to be or is even close to but he's got some similarities or attributes to a Barry like a Barry Sanders if he gets you one-on-one in space or two guys he can drop a dead leg spin out of it and make them both miss and run into each other Zach Moss is not doing that. Meanwhile, Devin Singletary isn't really a one cut and go guy. Like to me, they're similar in stature, but I don't think they're similar running backs at all. Silence. <laughs> yeah, I think you're overthinking it. Um, I don't. I won't disagree with your characterization and description of their abilities and their differences between them at all. Yeah. The However. Question- Oh, go ahead. However, go ahead. what I will tell you is there are only a certain number of running plays in the book. And you we are we like to be an inside zone run team. And my point is that both of those skill sets work for inside zone and they work for interior power, whether it's trap or mm. short power game. Right. The problem for them is there's too much noise on the edge and if you go back and look um at one of the clips i sent you and anybody else everybody in the chat recorded the game uh james cook it's zone left and he doesn't make a bad choice for cutting back behind the um the block from the tight end it just so happened the defender made it actually a pretty good play but when i was looking at it i thought to myself he could have pressed that play side and got three or four Right. Um, you know, burrowing in and, and getting a few yards. He broke it back, which wasn't a terrible decision. He gained two yards. But had he broke that tackle, 
which was kind of a ooh, shoestring tackle, so to speak, he'd have been down down the field 20. Right. And right. I, th- I think that our guys, regardless of, of how you want to mince up their, their abilities or compare them or contrast them, I think they would all benefit with a, with a better philosophy from the run game. Now, what we're not taking into account is all that bunch stuff might be helping the passing game. Well, that's so that's the, the part about the passing game, right? So for me, I don't want to be a run first team with Josh Allen as my quarterback. Mm-hmm. To me, they're, the only purpose the run game serves, and I know that this is not normal, and I know that this isn't necessarily football 101. The only mm-hmm. purpose the run game serves is when Josh is having difficulty. So you've got to me, it's not a, like I want to be that that team. Like you said, that you know, defenses fear our run game. I don't give a crap about that. I want to. I want a team. I want a run game that when Josh Allen is struggling, we start handing the ball off, and they take over the football game, which allows Josh Allen to then start taking the game over again, right? So bringing everybody up, which opens up you know things on the outside and deep. So to me, I don't want to be a run first team. Like, well, and and, and again, I'm not arguing that we should. Well, kind of am. I'm not arguing that we should. No, not run first. I get it. All right, but right, right. I, I'm just saying have a have a tighter philosophy, and I'll tell you why. You you start lining up first of all when you have to drag the receivers over for run game work, or it's that it's like a section in their playbook that wouldn't support like a taco, you know, it it would break through. Right, right, right. Well, how interested are you going to get those guys? I'll tell you offline a story about about uh, receivers and blocking in the run game i can't it's a family show so (laughs) later on um so i i I just think it's too much you're not going to get their interest you're not going to be able to to uh, rep it appropriately in practice you just can't get the timing there's too many people there's too many ways the defense can line up i think if you're gonna run the ball it's a clear running situation we're ahead by 10, we're ahead by 14, place on the field, down in distance, move everybody out and give our tiny little running backs by height, not by size, the ability to survey um, less people in their in their field of vision. So, and then they'll barbecue them. Buffalo Freddy asked this question or, or makes a statement, and I, I don't know if you ascribe to this type of stuff or subscribe. Wait, 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 we don't, we don't take statements. Well, it's a statement. I'm wondering if they're saving some run game run run game scheme, especially for things that include Gilliam for later in the year and the playoffs. Do you think that they're holding cards close to the vest as it pertains to we're not going to release that run game stuff yet? Jesus, did we even dress Gilliam for this game? He was in the game, and and the, the, well, that's, that's funny. another thing too. It's like we ran it well with Gilliam and running some traditional fullback lead kind of stuff on the weak side, you know, with action going this way and Gilliam going weak and right. Right. You know, with kind of a counter action and then it just disappeared. It's into the ether. I, I'd, I'd love that word. I'm sorry. I just like to, you're fine. The, big, the bigger problem, the so bigger, I don't con- know. The bigger concern is the fact that the Steelers were the 30 are the 32nd worst run defense in the NFL. They are, the, they're dead last by a lot. They're, they're so, a horrible run defense. Let me answer Freddie though. Sure. Uh, no, I I don't think that that you're playing hide and seek. I don't. I mean, maybe they do it now, but we didn't talk like that when we were good, when we were mediocre, or when we were bad. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's too risky. You know, you you put every play in you think is gonna gonna take advantage of their deficiencies. Right. Right. And that I mean that's what I would do. Although, I mean, you know, maybe a couple of players didn't play because they weren't worried about the Steelers because they had the 32nd worst, 32nd best, 32nd worst. <laughs> I think the worst run I think defense. Both, I think both, it works both ways. <laughs> <laughs> both things are true. <laughs> Whoa, uh, mind blown. I can tell uh, you, I can tell you for sure that uh, certain players did not play yesterday. They were just held out precautionary had we been playing the of Chiefs. Course. The, yeah, the chefs. They, would, they would have played. I, I, but also, I don't think Gilliam was one of those guys. I also if, don't. I don't understand what you said and how where the rubber meets the road as it pertains to. There had to be times 
You played for the, the the early 90s era Bills where the offense was borderline unstoppable. There had to be times where it wasn't, hey, we're going to go in and what are they not good at? Well, let's let's exploit their weakness versus we're better than them. We're just going to go do what we do. And I felt like that's more of what happened yesterday. We're better than this team. We're going to go do what we do. So the run game almost became an aside because why would we run the ball when that dude over there with 17 on his back? Is really yeah, but, good at the, but at the same time, you're saying that out of the other side of your mouth or <laughs> later on, you're saying, oh, yeah, but I want the run game when I need it. And you got to run the ball to have it when you need it. And I'm exactly. saying you're right. We're a pass first team. We got Josh Allen. We got Stefan Diggs et al. Yeah. Uh, and co, if you will. So consolidate the running game into four plays instead of six plays or eight plays with some of these multiple formations. Right. And again, well, I mean, what, what does that say to the offensive line? Like, Oh, we're going to be Gilliam heavy this week. We're going to feature a fullback and then he disappears. And you're like, well, uh, why? Right. Well, the reason why might be this week as you and I shuffle off to Kansas city where it's known for barbecue sauce. However, here in Buffalo, we have our own version of barbecue sauce. So it's very clear that you get the segues that I don't. <laughs> That's hysterical. I need a moment. I thought it was my show. Okay. <laughs> hey, from Iman and the renowned Q42BBQ.com. The best way to recap Sunday's game is by typing Pittsburgh Toilet. Into the Google machine. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. I'm so busy. I didn't even read this until this very moment. <clears throat> now I'll put my Joe Miller voice on. The best way to recap Sunday's game is by typing <laughs> Pittsburgh toilet into the Google machine. Check that out. And then head on over to Q42BBQ.com. Get your all natural made in Buffalo barbecue sauces and rubs. KC style, in fact. Punch in that coupon code. All caps, Joe, say it. Fina Show. Fina Show to save 15% off your order. And that's the letters BB, or sorry, Q, Q U E 42 BBQ.com. Yeah. All caps, Fina Show. I actually had somebody reach out to me on Twitter and said that they, they didn't capitalize uh, the A in Fina Show and they didn't get their 15% off. Oh, really so it has to be capitalized all caps wow no i'm just kidding i just made that up <laughs> why do you gotta do that <laughs> why do you be that guy i had the opportunity to uh stop by iman's tailgate iman oh and- my god he did the the steak drew from the rock power report yeah he had uh some 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 flank steak that was oh, the flank un- steak. freaking believable so good and then he yes. had some prime rib that was on top of bruschetta that was also amazing and then i got over the, to the mafia house and buffalo freddy who's in the chat was making pastr- barbecue pastrami sandwiches sandwiches as he likes to call them and uh yet i ate well yesterday and then i forget the name of the guy but some dude gave me deer jerky that was venison jerky that was unbelievable I, yeah go ahead i'm just saying um I'd like to make a request for the Green Bay tailgate to Buffalo Freddy and Iman. Repeat, lather, rinse, repeat. I love pastrami, and I need a I need a food photographer with me because it's like Iman read my mind because I did flank. Um, I don't know, it's like or skirt about uh, four weeks ago. And it it looked just like that. And I did the coffee rub. His coffee rub. Have you have you used it yet? Uh, I have not had the coffee rub yet. Jeez, Louise. That's Jeez, it. Show, Louise, show, he said. Shows, shows over early. I got to go eat. <laughs> That's hysterical. So this week, right now, the uh, as this show is being recorded, the Chiefs are playing the Raiders on uh, Monday Night Football. It is currently 7 to nothing. The Raiders are winning this football game and driving mm. again. Oh, uh, we go into Kansas City this week at 4.15, 3.15 local time. Uh, to play to face the Kansas City Chiefs, you and I will be there. Here's the wait, qu- wait, wait. What time is kickoff? Three fifteen Kansas City time. Oh, right, right. Three fifteen. No, is it's that four, right? I thought we were the Sunday it's, night game. No, it's the game of the week. Four fifteen. Oh, 
Wow. Are you, does that change things for you? Or are you not it does. Change? It does. I might have to go to bed earlier on Saturday <laughs> night when we arrive. I was like, when you have next expectations right there in the box right there, I was thinking like, oh, my God, we're, well, Bill's Mafia is just going to kill it. We're going to have the best time. My first away game, not really, but it sounds good. Yeah, you and played I, a lot of away games, eight of them a year for 10 years. <laughs> well, as a fan, bro, as a fan. Gotcha, I'm gotcha. Talking as, and I got stolen the whole COVID year, four games on the West Coast. Yes, I'm still bitter. Wait, not going to get too deep into it. You were at the Rams, but you didn't go to the game, right? No, I didn't go to the game. Yeah, that's um, right. My, man, it was just the timing was bad with my cousin and my son, Bruno. So I, I just rather watch the game with them. But – Literally at Arizona, at San Francisco, at LA, at the Raiders, missed them all because of the vid. No, because yeah, the whatever. Anyways, no, moving play. on. So I feel going, like I had a season stolen from me it, oh, from all of us. So going into this game, <laughs> is this an opportunity? We saw to Buffalo Freddy's point in the comments. We saw them do the Gilliam kind of power run stuff against the Rams, and then it vanished. When you think of the Rams and you think of who they are, for, uh, you know, offensively and keeping right Matthew Stafford off the field, mm -hmm. is this is this one is this an opportunity or is this potentially a time where we might see that wrinkle added back to this football team because we have not seen it in the last four weeks? You know, I like the idea where you're going with this because it's it's I think we're getting to the point where they think this Buffalo KC matchup is some kind of like ballet finesse uh extravaganza right and i think there could be we could tolerate a little bit of uh you know helmet in the mouth kind of thing right right so a slug to the gut and if you put gilliam in there i'd rather see gilliam and some weak side um zone and and some uh modified counter with gilliam chasing the the guard than this bunch set zone garbage that's not working uh oh, I said garbage. <laughs> so you could do both. You can bring Gilliam in and run some power football. And by the way, I mean he's shown himself to be, you know, quite the the receiver. And if I hear another announcer say pass catcher, then just receiver for anybody who receives the ball. I, I hate that expression. Yeah. So I like it. I like the idea of bringing some power to this game that's kind of getting a, a sort of a finesse legacy to it. Uh, the matchup, you know. Well, do you, I mean, when you talk finesse legacy, are you talking about the difference between, you know, power football, you know, smash mouth football, or do you see this as being a potential high scoring game where it comes down to who has the ball last? Well, that's what it's been. That's uh, what it's kind of been, I think. People no, thinking 20, that it's 2020, it was the, the Chiefs were here, right? And it was in that rain game, and the Bills tried to do the whole BS route. The, the Dick, the Bills did the Dick Duran. The whole, well, we're going to try to possess the ball and keep the ball out of Patrick Mahomes' hand. And if we limit his possessions, we'll keep it close. And then we'll only lose by four instead of losing by 20. <laughs> it was Dick Duran football to a T. And like the one time the that bitterness it worked, is seeping out of you. The one time that it worked against the Colts and we beat them, I think. And it was like, I've been proven right. And it's like your whole entire career, Dick Duran, this is, other than one season with the Bears, you've been awful, regardless of that. And then after that, it's been. There's been aspects of, yes, trying to fling it down the field as much as possible to keep up with them. I think it's got to be a shootout. I don't know how you – I mean, this defense is better than it's ever been. So there's a good no, – they can look, shut I, them down. But even still, sorry, even still, if you can beat the the, the, the Chiefs 35-7, to 7, you do it. No, I, I don't disagree with you. I just think that, if you know, we'd be better off bringing Gilliam in and running those types of plays that they want to run without having that – bunch set right outside the tackles hip mm -hmm. right so i think both things can be true but we're more powerful when we're moving in a in a tight inside zone scheme right or a power scheme and i don't think that the bunch set play grouping has either of those things right you know you're going to go back and watch the game. And, and Probably. Um, it's just uh, I'm excited for this game. I'm excited to be there. Uh, you know, I've seen the Bills play Kansas City in Kansas City twice. We've lost both times. Oh, uh, my God. You should stay home. The most recent being obviously the playoff game. 
last year. But that crowd is great. Uh, they're second to one, in my opinion, and that's the Bills Mafia. They're a great crowd. They're a great fan base. Um, they're annoying, and they've been – so even they're an annoying fan base even when they're bad. So they're even worse when they're good. Um, but uh, oh, I, I thought you meant they're the second best fan base, meaning fan experience. Like when you're in the stands, they're going to be congenial and decent. Oh no, I meant but like you, it's just an, it's a great, it's a very yes, okay. college environment. They're loud. I've told you before. So like, you know, and it's funny how many people have chirped back your comments to the mafia that like when to get loud. You want to get loud while they're in the huddle, not when they break the huddle. And it's funny because like people, not that. 70,000 people paid attention, but the bill, I was noticing the fans were kind of getting loud sooner before. So the bills fans do that, right? They get, they get loud ball snap. They come down, they get loud ball snap. They come down in Kansas city. And you'll learn this, this sun, this Sunday, as soon as the bills get on the field, what do you mean? I'll learn this. Like I played there. It's oh, here we go. I it's, played there. I've been to Kansas city. I'm a, as a fan, we're talking about you. Bro, we're going to see each other this weekend. And you just, <laughs> You're just begging for an ass beating <laughs> oh, after that one. I got my knee fixed. I'm ready to go. I'm Listen, ready. there will be a moment where I just surreptitiously <laughs> slide up behind you Listen, and put you in a little headlock. Listen, I hate to disappoint you, but Jerry O loves me. And I, if I, so I got, if, if I'm going to, like, I got a bodyguard this weekend and Marino's going to be there. Like, I'm, I'm good to go. So my kids, are you going to beat me up with my kids there? Come on. No, you're not. Yeah, I need to take you down a couple of notches. <laughs> anyways all that to say this what's I'm your really... prediction what's your expectation i think i think we have to run the ball a little bit mm. i get it we, we got to be able to run it clyde edwards alaire when we're least expecting it or need him to fall down the most always picks up seven and gets that damn first down we need to have that ability to do it there i said it I, I don't disagree. I just don't think it needs to be a reliance or a dependence on the run early. I think they need to run when it matters and right. run, run when it right. stings. We and run, agree. Run, running when it stings a lot of times means Josh Allen. So Josh right. Allen doing what he did last week against the, Ra against the Ravens where there was only four called run plays and the other four that he ran were basically him having the liberty to read and react. Mm -hmm. I took the snap. I knew what was going to happen, so I took off. And to me – which he's done. He did that in the last game, the last two games against the Chiefs, and it did hurt them a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, the, the the regular season game last year, they won. They won big uh, last year during the season, and we know what happened. Th to be honest with you, the Bills might be a better team than the Chiefs right now, even with okay. the loss in KC in, in, in the playoffs. The Bills might but be a better team. But, but getting into the mindset of our fandom and the people who will thankfully download and listen to this glorious podcast. Uh, what what do you want from tonight? Like, do you want the Raiders to beat Kansas City? They just and then knowing team. that knowing that their game is you know a day and a half later than it should be, you know, because they they're playing a Monday night. They just went up fourteen nothing, so that doesn't okay. mean anything because it's the it's the freaking okay. Chiefs, right? Because it's Mahomes, I get Mah it. right. So, but they just went up, and, and Mahomes a lot of times for whatever reason seems to play better when he's down by two two possessions, but ten points, double double okay. digits. I don't know what the answer is. I think that uh, it benefits the Bills to be coming off of a win, a relatively easy win, uh, having a full week versus the Chiefs who have a short week, although it is home-to-home, -home, which makes a difference because they don't have the travel day, right? So you know mm -hmm. all, all about that. So it changes their schedule for them or helps their schedule. Um, you got to speak to it. So you are you are big on the whole remember the feeling, forget the game. So if they lose mm -hmm. in this football game, remember the feeling, you know, forget the game. I mean, are they going to take out a loss to the Raiders on the Bills? I felt, sidebar, I felt there was a lot of people calling this game for the Chiefs over the weekend that somehow they were going to wax the Raiders because it's Mahomes. And I was like, the Raiders have played the Chiefs tougher than anybody else. I mean, it's an interdivisional rivalry, and the Raiders have beaten the Chiefs several times in the last couple of years. Like, I didn't get that at all, like how they were just, it was almost like a, a foregone conclusion that just, the Chiefs were going to beat the Raiders. And I was like, uh, I'm not so sure. And right now they're winning 14 nothing. <clears throat> I I would rather see the Raiders win. Uh, for and you know, flying from Buffalo to Kansas City, I mean, I, I, you really don't feel the effects of travel until you are going really far. Right. And which is why the the alignment I think was so much better for the Cardinals. 
not that it really in the end has helped very much recently but i mean when they were in the east they had to go so far so i don't i don't see that as being a big deal even though they're playing on monday night uh, they don't have to travel because the bills are coming to them. That's that's not part of my thought process. But for me, it's more about sowing a little bit of doubt. Mm. Like, you know, I know that they think they've replaced Tyreek Hill, right? But did they? And if you can create a little bit more doubt mm. um, and you create a little bit of maybe a little panic, I don't know. Um, the lack of Tyreek Hill on that football team matches up for the bills better than almost any other team that the Chiefs are going to play against. Because Tyreek Hill, as much as there's been times that they've borderline contained him, he has yeah. hurt. Now, dealing with Kelsey is one thing. Dealing yeah. with Kelsey and Hill are two different things. Yeah. No, I totally agree with you. I, I, I definitely would rather see the Raiders win. A little bit of doubt creeping into the Kansas City organization. And then, especially when you look at the success that uh, the Buffalo Bills have had, I hate it when I do that. When the success of the Bills has been so strong in the first quarter of every game, and we've been strong defensively in the second half of every game, only allowing uh, one touchdown, one, one touchdown, touchdown this year, right? And 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 the fact that, uh, thank you, Tracy. It's telehealth. Uh, I'm still stacking up all of my telehealth appointments for the two losses that you attended, um, which were your fault. <laughs> I will say that the uh, only having given up one touchdown in the second half this year probably ends this week. Yeah, well, maybe, <laughs> but it's still an insane it's it's statistic, an insane right? I mean, I'm like, woohoo, I read that today. I was like, I really hadn't thought about it because there's so many things to think about. Like, this team is just like dripping yeah. with and just oozing with wonderful stuff to talk about, yes. whether it's the receivers responding or. The DBs, you know, with a whole cast of characters changing like this, it's just fun. Like it's fun yeah. to win. I don't know if anybody's ever said that before. It's fun to win. I don't think so. I think you, I know, you, right? I mean, who would have thunk it? Trademark John Fina. <laughs> yeah. Every I want a penny every time somebody says that. Says it's fun to win. Dear God, it's fun to win. So well, I'm excited, to see, I'm excited to see you this weekend. Um, I'm excited to. It hang will out be the you. highlight of my trip to see your family. Uh, maybe not so much you, but wow, I'm kidding. You know, I'm kidding. It's going to be great. Uh, honestly, I've, I hated playing in Kansas city, so I would like to kind of flip that script for us. Um, you know, given the last two that you went to where we were on the L side. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. It's going to, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a very good, obviously competitive, enjoyable game. So it's, it's probably the best game this se- it should be the best game this season so far out of all of the NFL right i mean it's i mean it's it should be it should have everything that we're looking for as far as that goes it, it could come down to something simple like t- turnovers right Negative well i points. think in the afc as in the afc overall you're right you know baltimore doesn't look as scary and it's not just because of right. what we did to them it's right. it's what cincinnati did when you you didn't think cincinnati's a really great football team right now so yeah. I mean the I don't even know is that the North and in the South I mean who's in the South right now? The Jaguars uh, just lost. Obviously the Colts, yeah, Texans. Right? I mean there's really not. Anybody. And then you got the West. So it's just. And wow, it was supposed this, this to be. Is, this... It was supposed to be four teams from the West that could destroy you, and then Russ is a shell of himself. Geno Smith is outplaying him with his former team in Seattle right, by right. a mile. Right. The Raiders have an awful offensive line who are winning in this football game right now. And then obviously the Chiefs, the Chiefs, and then the Chargers, or who knows what the Chargers are going to be. Specifically, how do you quantify the Raiders' offensive line play? Because a blanket statement like that, I find to be a little dismissive toward my uh, former position group. Why do you have to take offense to everything when somebody talks about? I'm just <laughs> telling you, I have not watched every Raider game. I'm just telling you what, what I've heard from Good Morning Football and the shows. Know, is that the Raiders' offensive line has been letting. And, them the, and there are instances where offensive lines are bad. I've been on some of them um in college and in the pros Mm -hmm. and uh yeah so it's not unheard of it's just more likely that uh, the rest of the team is terrible and they just can't live up to the offensive line play (laughs) i don't even know what that means was that (laughs) trademark that one if you're gonna trademark (laughs) one because nobody i guess that's not what you want to (laughs) (laughs) 
That was awful. Lady, I'm going to end the show with that. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been tuned into the Off Tackle with John Fina show brought to you by the Market Dominator team by House Capital and Q42 Barbecue on the Buffalo <clears throat> Rumblings Vidcast Network presented by Picasso's Pizza. My name is Joe Miller. I'm the host of this year. Wonderful show. You can find me on Twitter at Joe Miller Wired. That there is the star of the show, John Fina, former Buffalo Bills offensive tackle for 10 years. You can find him on Twitter at John Fina. John, any final words? Yeah, if you like the show, tell your friends about it. Then go back and listen to it on all the download locations. I mean, we're having a great time. Uh, we love our comment section. We love the Bills Mafia. And, you know, we'll take some heat if you want to challenge us. I won't think about it for very much longer after the show, but I will be offended for this long. Uh, we're having a great time. We're hoping that you're having a great time with us. And I am John Fina at John Fina on Twitter. Love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. And uh, next week will be interesting because you'll be traveling, I think, and I'll possibly traveling, but we'll figure all that stuff out. Regardless, love you guys. Talk to you soon. Go Bills. Go Bills.